At the top of the Hive GUI, the control bar hosts a range of global parameters, a few utility functions, and the preset browser. Step through the presets in the currently selected preset folder using the previous and next buttons to either side of the data display, and open the preset browser by clicking the preset button. The left-hand pane of the preset browser shows the folder structure of the preset library, with the square buttons to the left of each folder unfolding its subfolders. The center pane houses the presets themselves, and the right-hand pane displays info saved as part of each preset by its designer. To switch between presets, either click their names or use your keyboard's arrow keys to step up, down, left and right. Individual Hive controls can be made immune to preset changes by right-clicking them and selecting Lock. A locked control remains at its set value through preset changes, with the padlock icon indicating its locked status. Locked controls can still be adjusted manually, however. Presets are moved and copied between folders by dragging and dropping, hold down the Option key to copy, and selecting multiple presets is done by holding the Shift key for contiguous selection, or the Command or Control key for non-contiguous. Right-clicking a preset reveals a menu of options, including Make Favorite, which puts a star next to that preset's name, and Mark as Junk, which hides the preset unless the Show Junk menu entry is activated. Reveal in Finder or Explorer opens the presets containing folder in your operating system's file browser, where you can perform all the usual file operations on the presets within. Deleting, moving, copying, etc. Right-clicking a folder brings up the Create New Folder entry, which does what it says. As well as Refresh for updating the browser database after any external changes, and resetting the folder views according to their on open expand to settings, which are made in the same menu. To save your own presets, navigate to your desired storage folder. A user folder is installed automatically in Mac OS X and can be created manually in Windows, and click the Save button. Name your preset and add a description, as well as author and usage info in the dialog that appears. To close the preset menu, click the preset button again. At the left hand end of the control bar, the mode parameter sets Hive's voice mode to one of four options. Poly mode enables polyphonic voicing with the maximum number of simultaneous voices set by the voices parameter. The other three modes are all monophonic. Mono restricts playback to one note at a time, with the envelope re-triggering on each new note. While legato mode does the same, but without envelope re-triggering for smooth transitions between notes. Duo mode, meanwhile, has oscillator 1 playing the lowest held note, and oscillator 2 playing the highest.
The transpose and fine tune controls allow for up to 25 semitones of global transposition up or down. Transpose shifts in semitones while fine tune adjusts the tuning in cents. Below the data display, and thus not strictly speaking part of the control bar, are the synth engine buttons. Descriptively named Normal, Dirty and Clean, these switch hive between three distinct sonic characters by adjusting various under the hood parameters and behaviours, specifically oscillator detune, filter model, envelope attack shape and oversampling. The differences between them should be apparent just by flicking from one to another, but to explore them fully, play with the filter, detune and envelope controls while doing it. Also not actually part of the control bar, but worth a mention here, the link button slaves the controls to the right of the central hexagon to those on the left, with an L appearing next to every slaved control. With link active, adjusting a control on the left also adjusts its counterpart on the right, with their relative spacing maintained. To the right of the preset buttons are the undo and redo functions and the global output level control and meter. Finally, the cog icon at the far right opens the configuration panel, wherein you can assign the knobs and faders on your hardware MIDI controller to highest controls, edit the resulting controller map, and tinker with a handful of preferences including text anti-aliasing, GUI size and mouse wheel raster.